Thank you very much. Uh, so, from disruption of the energy markets to being somewhat unruly with video, uh, Sarah Wood is the co-founder of the marketing technology company Unruly. Uh, she's the lady who knows a thing or two about how to get videos to go viral. So I apologise if that makes you a marked woman. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Hey everyone, uh, it's great to be here today uh, and if we're talking about disruption, I think the name unruly uh, often terrifies people. It certainly terrifies uh, the US border control. Whenever we go into the US and they look at our cards and they're like, unruly? Unruly media? Uh, why is that your name and what are you doing here? Are you here to cause trouble? We're like, no, 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 you could not imagine actually a more ruly company. Uh, <laughs> So we, if, for those of you who don't know Unruly, um, we are, um, if you've ever seen any moonwalking ponies, any singing kitties, um, any um, roller, ba roller skating babies, that's probably us. Um, it's our technology anyway. We don't make videos, but we make the videos go famous. Uh, so we are the technology behind uh, branded videos that are going viral across the open web. Uh, we were founded back in 2006, and this was a really disruptive moment. It was a great moment to be founding a company. Uh, the social web was just kicking off. Uh, so if you think back to 2006, things that were happening were uh, Jack Dorsey sent his first tweet. Uh, it wasn't in an open service, but it was still very, it was in, under construction. Facebook was very much under construction. It was still just for university students, but it was about to be a big breakout. Uh, YouTube was still an indie. Uh, when we founded, and it was a big year for Time magazine because uh, they decided not to go with celebrities, not to go with politicians when they were choosing their person of the year, and they chose you as their person of the year um, because the participatory web was really kicking off. Uh, now, this was incredible for brands. Uh, it was a huge opportunity. Uh, suddenly, there was all kinds of conversations going on and the possibility for all kinds of conversations with consumers, but it was also a very scary moment for brands. Uh, brands who were used to buying uh, advertising on TV, which was very simple, it was interruptive, nobody could talk back. Suddenly they were thinking, well, how do we connect with our consumers on the social web, on digital, where people will talk back to us, where it's fractious, it's, it's vociferous um, and, and unruly. Uh, and that's kind of where our name came from, this idea that there was this unruly landscape uh, and brands wanted to engage with it. And what we've been doing since 2006 is helping them to navigate this new uh, digital terrain. Uh, using our data uh, and using our distribution platform. Uh, so we've worked now on over uh, 3,600 campaigns. Uh, we've d distributed some of the most famous campaigns. I'm hoping that you'll know. So Evian Roller Babies was the most viewed ad of all time. Uh, we did that back in 2009. Most viewed ad until last year uh, when it was overtaken by Unilever, Dove Real Beauty Sketches, a very thoughtful ad. Um, and this is now the most viewed ad of all time. Uh, and when we talk about most viewed and most shared, we're talking about millions of shares, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of views now. So there's a massive opportunity for brands who get this right. If they can create awesome content, get it distributed well, and then they really will stand out from the crowd. Uh, and that's what I've been asked to talk about today, is how to stand out from the crowd. So that's, that's the first thing we do. We help brands stand out from the cloud. And if we've looked at big data, big services, uh, I guess what you're also seeing is an age of big content, a huge amounts of content being created by brands, by all of us. It's constantly kind of tweeting or Facebooking our friends. And when brands are creating their content and wanting to talk to you or wanting to talk to us, they're competing with that content. They're competing with that noise. Uh, so it's more important than ever before that they create the kind of content that people want to watch and want to share. And shareability is all about, um, is, is what Unruly Media and what Unruly is all about. So what do we have in terms of making ourselves stand out from the crowd and how have we built our own brand? The first thing is unique product, uh, unique technology, unique data. Uh, so what we have at Unruly is the largest data set of sharing behavior in existence and video sharing behavior. So Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, blogosphere, we know who's been sharing what content and where, and this dates back to 2006. This has helped us to build out a product which does the impossible. Again, very disruptive. Uh, everyone says, oh, you can't predict a video hit. No, not possible, not possible. It's a black swan event, it's, uh, it's just uh, totally unpredictable. Uh, and we say no, we say it's not acceptable just to say it's not possible. With all the big data that's available, with all the academic research that's been done, it absolutely is possible. Uh, and what we've built out is a product called ShareRank, which predicts the shareability of brands' ads in advance and helps them to improve the shareability so they can improve their return, their return on investment of their ad spend. Uh, so th the uniqueness of the product is really important to us and that also helps us with distribution because we know who those super sharers are, when we seed out those videos we can make sure we're targeting the 10% of the people who deliver 90% of the shares. Then it's about uniqueness of culture. 
Uh, and I'm really, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome place to work. I I'm absolutely love it. Every day is different. Uh, and one of the things that we think is incredibly important if we're going to continue growing rapidly, uh, and we have 50, we have, uh, we're operating kind of many different territories, uh, 12 offices, 150 staff. Um, so we're seeing huge growth. We've just opened in Asia Pacific. One of the things we think is important to maintaining that growth is to keep up the innovation. So we're constantly thinking, thinking up new ideas, having big company-wide brainstorms, and we run a, a shop, an XP shop. So if those of you are familiar with programming, we're an X, XP programming shop, and that means we do an extreme flavor of agile, constantly iterating, constantly planning, listening to market feedback, two-week development cycles, pushing up new features every day, making sure that everybody is collaborating, getting involved. The best ideas come from all over the company. You never know where they're going to come from. Uh, so making sure that you have the kind of environment where people are confident you know, confident feeding in an idea and then watch it happen uh, and that's really really exciting and then the third thing that I think will help us grow uh, is is something a, a little bit different from unique product and that's unique brand uh, so we build our brand out and uh, we build our brand out globally and as we do that the London brand and the UK brand has become incredibly important um, you know, we see uh, we see all, all kinds of organizations in London I see Russ there from Tech London Advocates uh, who are working really hard to put London and the UK on the map and show just how much we are growing and what an innovative business entrepreneurial economy we are and that actually has been incredibly useful Tom really as we've been going out into the US and Asia Pacific and now when I start saying to people, oh, hi, I am where I'm really, we're headquartered in London, they go, London? Oh, you mean Tech City? I'm like, well, yeah, I guess. So I think there's been a great job done in terms of um, evangelizing London overseas. Uh, and I think it's really important that here in London, you know, we recognize the work that's being done and we recognize the, uh, the reputation that London is building internationally as being a blueprint for how to grow a digital economy and how to grow a digital ecosystem um, that the rest of the world looks to. And we're all very much part of that. And it's, it's a real pleasure to be here today to talk with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.